a bit of an obsession with macro controllers because it is a cool concept to be able to just input a sequence of commands and then have the controller essentially play the game for you or at the very least, make a game just a little bit easier. It could even help streamline a tedious task. It's not exactly a complex idea. You just hit record, play out a sequence, and then you play that sequence back, like a, like a yak back or something. But this seemed like a relatively new concept. I haven't even heard about macro controllers until about 2019, and it came in particular handy with Animal Crossing, which had major user experience issues and could have definitely used some streamlining. Little did I know, this concept existed 30 years ago. This bizarre looking retro punk looking thing looks like a fake controller you'd see in a movie. It's called the SN Program Pad by STD Entertainment. An incredibly unfortunate name. There's a lot going on here, but if I have this right, this might be the first macro controller ever made, at least commercially, and we should be able to program it to do some pretty cool stuff. God, God, man, I was like a pixel away, dude. <laughs> This video is sponsored by, <laughs> just kidding, there's no sponsor today, it's just me. If you want more me, for the love of Christ, go to twitch.tv slash wolfden. But anyway, I ate a hot dog today because it was my grandpa's birthday. Oh, he's dead, Happy but it would, have, okay. it would have been his birthday. <laughs> oh, dude, amazing. What a specimen. Pauline! <laughs> Beautiful day for golf. Come hang out, talk in real time and chat and whatnot. We also do our podcast over there, the Wolf Den Podcast. That is on podcast services. It is also on youtube.com slash Wolf Den Podcast. And if you want to see some of the gameplay stuff, but you don't got a lot of time, youtube.com slash Wolf Den Clips. The, the only problem with owning an air fryer is that you become an air fryer bro immediately. Right, right. So that's your homework for today. When this video is done, go check out the Wolf Den Podcast YouTube channel, the Wolf Den Clips YouTube channel, and if you're feeling really adventurous, oh no, a new platform? That's that's crazy. Twitch.tv slash Wolf Den. Thank, thank you so much for being here. So I got two of these controllers off of eBay a while ago. It was 35 bucks for the pair. And I started making a video on them and then I realized I had absolutely no idea how to use them because I didn't have the instruction manual. And no, the instruction manual doesn't exist in PDF form anywhere on the internet. So I had to buy the instruction manual off of eBay and wait for that to come. In the meantime, I knew this thing had pre-programmed macros for fighting games. So I purchased Super Street Fighter 2 and Fatal Fury 2, which are close to the games that this thing supports, but not quite, we'll, we'll find out. Macro controllers usually target fighting games because there are long strings of complex moves that you can map to just one button. But I also want to see if I can get this thing to play an entire Mario level for me. But we'll try everything. I've never heard of STD entertainment before. I've never heard STD be next to the word entertainment. But after this controller was released, they changed their name to Interact. This company also made Game Shark and Action Replay devices, and everyone's favorite, the Handy Boy. By STD Entertainment. It's a big controller, significantly beefier than a stock SNES controller, but I actually kind of like it. It's shaped very bizarrely, especially from the side. The face buttons are kind of on this raised surface. The clear acrylic shell actually feels nice. It's a hard plastic. It feels good to hold. Even the shoulder buttons are fine. The only issue is that they're kind of short because of this monstrosity in the middle. It does look very intimidating because there are a lot of buttons here and a tiny little LCD screen that has this giant bevel that makes the whole thing protrude out the top. But that allows you to see all of the technical stuff that the controller is doing, and one boob. So everything within the gray bevel is for programming the little computer that's in there. There are three extra buttons around the side of the face buttons that will serve as your triggers. 
There are 12 different modes, each with different macros on the three buttons. Modes zero to six are the different Street Fighter II characters, and modes seven, eight, and nine are for Fatal Fury characters. Modes 10 and 11 are for you to program yourself. Remember, there are three trigger buttons, so that's six macros we can save onto this thing ourselves. If your goal is just to play Street Fighter II or Fatal Fury, then you're set. If you're a big, dumb, stupid idiot like me, and you bought Super Street Fighter II and Fatal Fury 2, then you might have noticed those are not the games. But luckily, Super Street Fighter 2 is has essentially the same moves and Fatal Fury 2, uh, this copy just don't work. It's very easy to set the programming mode you want by pressing the mode button. You just have to reference the instruction booklet to pick the right program mode for the character you're picking. Mode zero has a special secret code macro that is supposed to allow a character to fight against itself. I assume this means that if you pick, say, Ryu, the controller will just make an AI second player Ryu to fight against you. but. This code didn't work on my version of Super Street Fighter 2, so I couldn't test this out. Now, the macros it's using are assuming that you're facing right, which is a pretty good assumption to make. But if you're facing left for any reason, all you have to do is hold left at the start of the macro and it will mirror the entire macro. The mirroring worked pretty well for the most part, but it whipped my Hydouken a lot. Hydouken. How do I use, how did I used to say it? Among the other buttons on here, we have the slow button, which creates a sort of artificial slow motion effect. A lot of third party controllers have this feature. Essentially, it just rapidly presses the start button to simulate a slow motion effect. Obviously, if the game you're playing has a start menu, then this won't work at all and you'll probably have a lot of problems with it. And of course, there's a regular old turbo function, which will program any button to activate a turbo. They call it auto fire. You press and hold the big auto button in the middle and also press the button you'd like to be turboed. Then just repeat the process to clear it. And that's about it for this controller. I'm just kidding, let's play some Mario. I wanna make this thing play a Mario level for me. It ended up being surprisingly difficult. Luckily, this thing has the most accurate macro playback I have ever seen, even among new controllers, which isn't saying much because they've all sucked. Unluckily, it only lets you input seven sequential buttons at a time, which, as you can imagine, is not necessarily enough to beat a whole Mario level. Come on. I chose level 1-1 on Super Mario 3, not for any particular reason. Oh, oh, oh. Come on. Piss. Nice. God, God, man, I was like a pixel away, dude. <laughs> it took a while to get it figured out. Brushing up against blocks during jumps helped minimize the timing variance. I tried to create little checkpoints for myself around where I thought the macro would be ending. Ooh. Somewhere where I could safely Beautiful. take a beat and press the next macro button. It took four whole macros. Beautiful. In order to beat the first level of Super Mario 3 and only a few minutes of banging my head against the wall. Yeah, baby. What I'm talking about. So in terms of practicality, this thing could be useful if there's like a hard part later on in a level and it's very tedious getting to that part. You can use the macro function as a sort of pseudo save state or your own personal checkpoint system. I just think it's pretty cool that a 30 year old controller could play a game for you. Another major downside to this controller is that there's no battery save. So if you unplug the controller from the console, it forgets all of the macros that you programmed into it. So try not to spend too much time on the macros that you're saving, or at the very least, don't expect it to be there the next time you boot up the system. The SN program pad surprised me a lot. 
It has a lot of functions I wish modern controllers did. I think some modern controllers could learn a thing or two about how this 30-year-old controller manages to nail the timing of button presses. The only thing keeping this from blowing me away is that it can't handle long macros. But the way it handles Street Fighter 2 and Fatal Fury is pretty cool. If you want to play any other fighting game or program your own macros, you're kind of screwed. You'd have to program them in every time you want to play. But as a primitive sort of game shark, it is kind of cool. It's pre-programmed to play the game for you. It's a pre-programmed cheat code. A piece of gaming history I've certainly never heard of. And it's not because I was a dirty Sega kid, because there was a Sega Genesis version 2 for us scumbags. Anyway, what do you guys think about the SN Program Pad by STD Entertainment? Does this give you any ideas for certain games? Any uh, tedious inputs that you'd have to do over and over again? Maybe this could help you out with. The use case that always comes to mind for me is tedious tasks in Animal Crossing, like being able to chop down a tree and get all of the loot for it with one button. Are there any Super Nintendo games you can think of that have tedious tasks like that? Leave it in the comments below, add me on Twitter, and any and all of this other social media garbage. I know that there's some frame-perfect inputs for, like, Super Mario World speedruns. I don't know if this thing is that frame-perfect, but it'd be interesting to see if this could work for those. Somebody much better than me would have to try this out. Uh, hey, you saw in the beginning, we have a podcast channel, a clips channel, and a Twitch channel. If you want to hang out more real time, talk in real time, and have some long form content, go to twitch.tv slash wolfden. If you're that averse to Twitch, it's it's kind of it's kind of a stupid stance to take. But we have youtube.com slash wolfden podcast and youtube.com slash wolfden clips. All the stuff from Twitch goes over there eventually. But of course, if you want to help support the channel, the most important thing that you can do is just subscribe. You can't rely on YouTube to put us on your homepage all the time. You have to make sure that that says that you're subscribed. And share this video with a friend, a friend who is into this retro stuff and might think tinkering around with something like this would be pretty cool. Thank you guys very much. You have yourself a very good week.